आचार्य जी आई एम रीडिंग द अष्टावक्र गीता प्लीज थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन दीज सो ही हैज शेयर कपल ऑफ एक्सेप्ट the excerpt comes from the book commentaries on ashtavakra gita by this speaker and she is quoting from chapter 5 titled the real meaning of meditation practice of meditation means acquired knowledge about meditation it will not help because the acquirer of that knowledge itself is the bondage then another quote it requires something beyond words maybe a particular presence for the words to have an effect they are mere words things methods expressed in words the touch of the special is missing the liveness is missing mm-hmm. okay. related to this she asks what is the relevance of ashtanga yoga in general and specifically asan kriyas pranayam dharana what is your opinion on hatha yoga and the thought that hatha yoga prepares one for rajyog the mind the body hmm? their relation and their effect upon each other in general the mind has an effect on the state of the body if man were perfect and were living perfectly then the source the mind and the body would have been in perfect alignment and agreement with each other life activity and existence would have proceeded seamlessly from the source to the mind and from the mind to the body from the heart to the mind from the mind to the limbs after all the mind is nothing but the source expressing itself subtly and the body is nothing but the mind expressing itself grossly so in a perfect sense these three should be one but they are not there is nothing ideal there is nothing perfect in this world in the perceiver of the world 
so the mind affects the body hmm? working on the mind observing directly the movements patterns inclinations compulsions and tendencies of the mind has an effect on one's life action and behavior that is the path of realization but that is a slightly difficult path not many have the insight to look directly at their thoughts and tendencies though if practiced it would be the shortest path look at thought itself and actions behavior and life would change many of us most of us live at a gross level of existence our minds have lost the reflective capacity to look at themselves so the mind keeps looking outwards at gross objects that's the situation with most people their mind is busy looking outwards at gross objects it cannot look at itself when it cannot look at itself how will it know what's going on within it so the mind looks outwards at things objects worlds and gets affected by them we begin with saying that the body should operate as per the mind and it does but in most people there is traffic the other way as well the mind operates as per the body and the world the mind operates as per cross objects body too is a cross object this is called conditioning of the mind so mind is looking at the conditions prevailing in the world and operating as per them that is conditioning you look at how the world is and what you look at changes you you become conditioned the condition outside becomes your state and when i say outside that includes gross objects including the body so the condition of the mind in most people gets affected a lot by the condition of their body this is called conditioning so the people who are prone to conditioning victims of conditioning remain highly dependent on the condition of their body are you getting it if you are prone to conditioning you will remain dependent on conditions you will remain dependent on conditions and all external conditions are perceived by your body so when we say you are dependent on conditions let's say you are dependent on the temperature outside now you do not know what the temperature outside is you actually only know the temperature of your own skin even to know the temperature of the air outside you depend on your own skin so fundamentally the conditioned mind is depending on the conditioned of his condition of his own body when i say body i also mean 
the stuff that the body absorbs through the senses through the eyes through the ears all kinds of inputs hmm? so what is the state of the conditioned mind it becomes highly dependent on the body the state of the body conditions it is that clear hatha yoga makes use of this phenomena hatha yoga says now i know that this mind gets heavily affected by the condition of the body because this mind is prone to conditioning so hatha yoga says fine you do get conditioned so i'll change the conditions after all you do get conditioned so what will i do as a method to liberate you from the conditions i will begin with the conditions i will change the conditions hatha yoga uses a change in conditions as a liberator from the conditions as a method to liberate you from the conditions so hatha yoga says fine let's change the conditions let's change the body the mind has become rigid and stubborn fine let's turn the body flexible if you turn the body flexible then because the mind is dependent on the body the mind too will become little flexible a little receptive oh the the body has become fat it has accumulated a lot of unnecessary mass so let's reduce the mass from the body the mind is dependent on the body the mind too will lose its unnecessary mass what is the unnecessary mass of the mind old habits memories patterns hmm? the body has become lazy so the mind too has become lazy what is the laziness of mind called tamsa let's reduce the laziness of the body let's get things moving if the laziness of the body goes the laziness of the mind too reduces hmm? when the mind is agitated the breath too gets agitated let's normalize the breath let's give some depth to breathing breathing and because the mind depends on the body when the breath gets all right the mind also tends to get all right that is the principle on which all hatha yoga operates and even techniques like pranayama etc from ashtanga yoga getting it so far so good now comes the catch hatha yoga says because the mind gets affected by the body so let's change the body and cleans the mind right for hatha yoga to succeed the mind must remain dependent on the body which means the mind must remain prone to conditioning now that's a problem for hatha yoga to be useful the principle that the mind gets conditioned by the world must hold true are you getting it but what is the objective of hatha yoga to bring the mind to a point where it is no longer prone to conditioning so hatha yoga can succeed only till a point please get the point hatha yoga proceeds by making use of the vulnerability of the mind towards the body bodily conditions the objective of hatha yoga is to reduce the vulnerability of the mind towards the bodily conditions and it makes use of the body to reduce that vulnerability but if the vulnerability is actually reducing then hatha yoga will fail 
because then change in body will not affect the mind. Are you getting it? So Hatha Yoga, as you keep practicing it, will give you great returns till a point and then will become incrementally useless for you. Because it can succeed only as long as you are prone to conditioning. And if you are still prone to conditioning, has your practice of yoga succeeded? No, it has failed. Who is the real yogi? Whose mind is no longer dependent on external conditions. If your mind is still dependent on how your body is doing, then are you a yogi? So Hatha Yoga is wonderful as something to start with. But it cannot take you to the destination. Because it makes use of the same thing that it seeks to eliminate. What does it make use of? Your corruptibility. It makes use of your vulnerability. It makes use of exactly the same thing that it seeks to eliminate. So either it will keep succeeding and not succeed or if it is failing then no point continuing with it. If Hatha Yoga is working wonders on you it means you are still vulnerable towards the body. Do you see this? Means you are doing stuff with your body and that is calming down your mind. Good that you are doing stuff with your body and that is calming down the mind. And bad because it means that your mind is dependent on the body. And if your mind actually starts gaining freedom from the body, then Hatha Yoga will start failing. That is the limitation with Hatha Yoga. And that is why it has been rightly said that Hatha Yoga is just a preparatory step for real yoga. You cannot use it as a lifelong thing. You cannot use it as the real thing. It is just an external preparation for the real inner work. It is in that sense not real yoga. In fact, if you go to the central text of Hatha Yoga, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, it says right at the outset that Hatha Yoga is for beginners who later on want to enter into advanced yoga. If you have no intention to have real yoga, which is real mystical union with the self, then Hatha Yoga would at most give you some bodily gains and yes, possibly and probably some calmness of the mind that comes with the bodily gains. Not much beyond that. Hmm? Mm -hmm.